This green text was submitted by a viewer. Thank you. All of these stories are from my mom, who was born and raised in Manila. B mom. Hanging out with family in smaller town maybe 20 miles from their home in Manila. Uncle leaves on motorcycle to go hang out with his buddies in the city. Everything is normal. JPEG maybe an hour later they see my uncle outside, but they never heard him pull up on his motorcycle which was quite loud. Uncle doesn't really talk for some reason. Says he just wants to rest in an odd kind of monotone way. Uncle is the most talkative guy 99% of the time, so my mom thought this was odd. Everyone just kind of chalks it up to him being tired or drunk and doesn't think much of it. Lola, grandma, makes him his bed in the bedroom. Uncle goes to bedroom to go to sleep. This was odd because he had only been out an hour and he usually spent the whole night hanging out and drinking with his buddies. 30 minutes later they get a call from the Manila Police Department. They tell us our uncle was struck and killed by a truck while on his motorcycle. Lolo, grandpa, tells them that isn't possible because he came back to our house half an hour ago. Check bedroom.jpg nothing. Nothing rearranged, nothing moved, no signs that someone had touched anything or ever been in there. Window was permanently jammed closed, so exit would have been impossible. Mom and rest of family swear they saw him come in, and they even made the bed for him and interacted with him. Pick related is a similar Honda Super Cub to the one my uncle had. Fast forward another year. Mom is driving with Lolo at night. Riding in jeepney.jpg. On a small road. They notice a knocked over motorcycle lying on the side of the road. The bike looks like it was in pristine condition, not a speck on dirt on it. No fucking way it's perfectly clean after riding on a dirt road. Stop the jeepney. Lolo gets out of jeepney, makes my mom wait in the car. They see what looks like a man lying face down in some tall grass 15 feet away from bike. Lolo starts walking towards the fallen man. Suddenly it clicks. Motorcycle she saw lying there was the same exact model my uncle rode the night he died. Calls frantically for my Lolo. Lolo runs back thinking she got hurt or something. Tell Lolo that that was the bike uncle had rode. Lolo doesn't say anything but looks like he realized something was off. Drive as fast as they can to the nearest phone to get help. Family members and neighbors come out to help. Go back to location. Bike is completely gone, the fallen man is gone. Spend the rest of the night yelling uncle's name and searching surrounding area. Never see a sign of him again. Later my mom asks my Lolo who the man was that he saw. Says he believes with all his heart that he saw my uncle's face on that man. I hope you guys enjoyed this experience and I'll work on getting more weird stories from my mom and Lolo and Lola. I believe this story 100% because us Filipinos are very superstitious about this kind of thing and I know my own family would not lie to me, so if you think it's fake you can fuck off. Be me. Study in private Catholic high school. Go on a Bible retreat. Retreat camp is in a secluded area in the province. Air super fresh, unlike smuggy Manila. Camp has a lot of huts. Area is super vast and foresty, the huts, dining areas and conference halls are widely spaced out, there's a couple of ducks roaming around. Everyone stays under a large two-story bamboo hut. Blank out during day activities. Come nightfall. The camp is pretty dark and it's a forested area. Place is dimly lit and you had to rely on moonlight or your phone's flashlight. Walk around with friends. I don't know mate we get to see Dwens or even to what is hanging around. Hear faint clopping noises. Joke around and ask whose mouth is making all those noise. The fuck.psd. Friends deny making any noise, but we can all hear it. Frantically point our flashlights around. One friend screams. We all point our lights to the direction he's screaming at. Get a glimpse of a tickblang's back before it got lost in the woods. Holy fucking shit. Everyone is freaking out. I'm just too happy I finally experienced something paranormal. Room advisor and camp counselor walks briskly towards us. Uh oh. TFW we've been gone for 3 hours past curfew. We went exploring after dinner, which gives us an hour of free time before we all get ushered back to the sleeping quarters. Other classmates have also explored the place, claimed they never saw us, so they assumed we played games at the first floor at the sleeping quarters. The classmates at the sleeping quarters claimed they never saw us too, so they thought we went exploring with the other group. TFW we got played by a tick blank.